positive economics studies facts about the economy and uh, economic behavior, so it tries to understand what is the case about the economy. And normative economics asks what there should be, what is a good state of affairs about the economy, or what is good economic behavior. I think it is better to distinguish between uh, scientific aims and ethical aims of economics. So on the one hand, economists try to identify facts, but they do not uh, necessarily identify facts that are value-free. On the other hand, economists also have ethical aims, so they try to tell us what are good or bad states of affairs about the economy, but these also rest on the identification of facts, and I think that's a more helpful way to think about this than to really strictly separate between positive and normative economics. Absolutely, yes. Economic theory has a wonderful array of powerful tools to characterize human behavior and characterize uh, states of affairs of the economy, and on the basis of that, it absolutely can tell us how to behave. The question is, to what extent should we listen to these recommendations? The advantage of economic theory is that it's often highly tractable what the assumptions are because of the mathematical models it uses, but we mustn't get carried away with how uh, seriously we take the results of these models and how we implement the recommendations that they make. Economists who've been working on fairness have identified a number of very helpful mathematical frameworks to study the fair division of goods. Economists call these situations bankruptcy games or bankruptcy situations or claims problems. And there are mathematical theories about these kinds of problems that are extremely helpful to think about fair division and fairness. Philosophers, on the other hand, have been asking very helpful normative questions about uh, fairness and uh, should maybe do more work to engage with what economists have said about fair division. Measurement is one of the hallmarks of scientific achievements. If a scientist has been able to quantify a concept or quantify what they're interested in, then they have achieved something which uh, is extremely powerful to uh, make interventions and to make the right kinds of predictions and explanations. So studying measurement in economics helps us to appreciate what economics uh, have already achieved and what uh, economists still have to do. I think philosophy and economics have started out as a set of quite similar concerns and questions and I think what we are seeing in, in recent times is that more people in philosophy and economics ask uh, similar questions. Again, I think that's a very positive development to be working together between the different disciplines. Being a philosopher of economics or uh, an, uh, a philosophical economist means that you have to be both a specialist in extremely difficult questions, but you also have to be a generalist. You have to be engaging in quite specific frameworks that are often very hard to understand in both philosophy and economics, but you also have to be able to zoom out and see the broad picture, and that uh, is a very difficult thing to do these two things at the same time. I think the main philosophical influence for myself has been Amartya Sen because he's been a philosopher and an economist at the same time uh, but there's also Nicholas Rescher who has been making a lot of different contributions in philosophy that link to economics in a, a variety of ways which are often still surprising to me.